Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we have a great nephrology case about acid-based disturbances, and it comes from TrueLearn, which is a Q bank that I like. For more videos like this, check out my cases or vignettes playlist. You'll find many cases on that playlist. And you can check out this TrueLearn Q bank by following the link in the description. Please pause and try to answer it yourself. We have a 26-year-old woman brought to the emergency department by her spouse because of progressive weakness and confusion. The husband said that she recently had a cold and has since developed polyuria and polydipsia. There is lethargy and altered mental status, some low-grade fever and tachycardia. Respiration 8 per minute. Blood pressure is low. Mucous membranes are dry and the urine has strong fruity odor. And let's look at the labs. Sodium is at the lower limit of normal. Potassium is okay. Chloride okay. Bicarb is very low. Let me give you a hint. When bicarbonate is low, odds are we have high anion gap metabolic acidosis. But let's not jump into conclusion. Glucose is very very high. Serum creatinine in a female should be less than 1.1, so that's on the edge. Arterial blood pH is low and bicarbonate is normal. I hope by now, since we have the fruity odor, the hyperglycemia, the low pH and the low bicarbonate, that you recognize that this is diabetic ketoacidosis. One of the causes of high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Are we sure that the anion gap is high? Let's check. Give me the cations on one side minus the anions. All right, this is my bicarbonate and my chloride. What's my sodium here? 135. And what's my bicarbonate? 12. How about serum chloride? That will be 100. Therefore, my anion gap is 135 minus 112. So the anion gap here is 23 milli equivalents per liter. Is this normal, high or low? Of course, this is high. The normal anion gap should be between 6 and 12. So we have high anion gap, and since the pH is low, it's acidosis. And since bicarbonate is low, it's metabolic acidosis. So, would you go with A, or would you choose C? Both of them have a metabolic acidosis component. Many students will say, look at the carbon dioxide here. Carbon dioxide is normal, which means there is no lung issue, so I will go with A. Big mistake. They got you, baby. Please remember this equation. The pH of the arterial blood is proportional to the serum bicarbonate over the PaCO2. What happened here? Well, we have a metabolic acidosis. So bicarbonate went down and that's why pH decreases. That's what you call a metabolic acidosis. Therefore, what should be the normal compensation from your normal lungs? It's the golden rule. Do unto others what you want them do unto you. If the numerator has decreased, then the compensation should be to decrease the denominator so that this can cancel this and pH returns back to normal. Now here is the $64,000 question. Did the lung lower my carbon dioxide? The answer is no, the lung did not change the carbon dioxide whatsoever. Is this normal? No, that's not normal, that's a disease. Carbon dioxide here is higher than I expected because I expected to be low, let's say 32. Instead, it's higher than expected. What do you call it when the carbon dioxide is higher than expected? Since carbon dioxide is an acid because it will combine with water and before you know it, it will give me carbonic acid, Therefore, this is also respiratory acidosis. So the correct answer is C. Is there another way to do this? Yes, indeed. If the primary disorder is metabolic acidosis, which it is because this lady had diabetic ketoacidosis, then the expected compensation can be estimated via the Winters formula. It has many versions in different textbooks, but let's stick with this one. The expected carbon dioxide from normal pulmonary compensation should equal 1.5 multiplied by the measured bicarbonate, which was 12, and then you add 8 plus or minus 2. If you do the math, the expected carbon dioxide should equal 26 millimeters of mercury plus or minus 2. Was the carbon dioxide 26? No, it was 40. Oh, 40? It was 
higher than expected. When the carbon dioxide, the acid, is higher than expected, we have another respiratory acidosis. So this patient had both metabolic acidosis and respiratory acidosis, which makes the correct answer C. What a beautiful question. And to belabor this point because it's worth belaboring, look at her respiratory rate. It is low. When I am hypoventilating, I'm retaining the carbon dioxide in my body. And carbon dioxide is an acid, adding another acidosis. I mean, how would you explain the very low pH right here? It is so low because we have a metabolic acidosis and a respiratory acidosis. So whether you're preparing for USMLE or COMLEX or the boards of physician assistants, or even if you are already a practicing anesthesiologist, OBGYN, specialist, surgeon, family doctor, etc., TrueLearn has a Q-Bank for you. And you can purchase TrueLearn and Picmonic in a singular subscription. Use my link in the description box to get a $25 discount. And as you know, I will never recommend a product that I have not tried before. Not only I've tried TrueLearn, I have finished more than 11% of the entire QBank. I have went over 311 questions at least, and I'm so proud of myself. When you see a question with this Picmonic symbol, it means that the explanation contains a video from Picmonic, which is an animated medical mnemonic. So what are you waiting for? You can try TrueLearn right now for free. Use discount code medicosis or click on the link in the description box to take your education to the next level. If you want to access more than 300 of my premium videos, click the join button and join the highest tier to get instant access. Go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you'd like personal tutoring, you can support the channel here or here. Thank you for watching, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.